Hello, hello. Just thought I'd show you guys the internals and uh, how to do some repairs of uh, a peak. Um, I got what do you call it? portable power system? They're also known as uh, uh, jump boxes or portable jump starters. Got some nice clamps here. Uh, I've had this for just a hair under a year, and let me tell you, I abuse the heck out of these. These get used constantly. Um, uh, we're always jump starting cars. Gets used on at least three or four vehicles a day. Um, this one in particular also has two 12 volt sockets. Uh, it also has uh, a USB power outlet so you can plug in your iPhone or uh, some other USB peripheral that you need to charge up. Uh, it has a three LED work light and this is actually uh, it, it does have a little bit of a, a, a lot of a, a lot of a bluish tint to it but it is also extraordinarily bright and it does come in handy um, it's also got a compressor that is extraordinarily handy when working on, on vehicles uh, if we get an accident or crash vehicle in that has a flat tire uh, we can just take this out to it fill up the tire and drive it around in or whatever needs to be done for some reason we always everybody always has flat tires around here um, it's got the uh, pressure gauge also has the uh, the uh, volt monitor uh, charging plug and uh, I had lost it but there's a little little plug little red plastic piece that goes into there and what that does is um, this has a low battery charge alert sound it's an uh, annoying, high-pitched, whiny beep. Um, I hate it, especially since we use this every day um, when we drain it after jumping a few cars. Uh, it just stays on. Of course, it reminds you to plug it in. We plug it in anyways. Uh, we don't even use the uh, standard charger to charge it anymore. Uh, we use one of our Schumacher charge uh, automatic charger since this is just uh, the charger that comes with it's just a dumb charger where you plug it in if you forget to unplug it eventually you cook your battery I don't like those so we just use a Schumacher charger uh, put in it it's automatic goes into float mode and it desulfates and we just clamp it onto the clamps uh, when uh, uh, when we're at the end of the day and plug it in next morning it's fully charged um, this one also has a 200 watt, 120 volt outlet. And then uh, for safety, you can connect the clamps to a vehicle, then turn the power on. So that way you're not turning the power on. They have live clamps all the time. And uh, there's the cord for the compressor, the, uh, the air, co air cord. Now, like I said, this thing has been flawless. And um, I've even used this on a, uh, a few uh, few trips, and uh, out when I'm on the boat, uh, I've used the 12 volt outlets to uh, plug in a 12 volt cooler, 12 volt refri refrigerator cooler. I've also used the 120 volt outlet to charge my cordless drill batteries and whatnot when I'm when I'm out and doing a job or some something of or some sort. So, anyways, uh, the battery in here is starting to get a little run down. This unit was about forty-five, fifty bucks. Uh, I wanted the one with all the bells and whistles. And the battery was a little bit on the underpowered side. So I am going to be pulling out the battery in here. Uh, battery is good enough to use in a few of our other applications. I'm actually going to shove this battery in my riding lawnmower. Since, since that one crapped out, um, it'll be good enough for that. And then, uh, uh, let's see, a little bit more to take apart here. What's holding me back? Oh, some of the wires are holding me back there. So, I guess since I won't be able to pull it apart fairly easily, I want to just give you guys a little tour of the inside. Um, I'm pleasantly surprised at the type of compressor they used. Uh, most of the compressors you'll see that are, are portable like this are uh, a lot of plastic, uh, which just seems to be fairly well built. 
um, pistons inside there, obviously to oil this compressor. Um, main gear is metal, secondary gear is plastic. It was a little on the slow side for filling up a, a, a car tire, especially if it was completely flat, but it did get the job done. Um, the motor seems to be uh, fairly decent sized. Uh, you got uh, your USB uh, voltage regulator. That will, that dumps drum, drops the voltage down from uh, 12 volts from the battery down to uh, 5. There's your sockets for the 12 volts. Now, let's see. Here's the uh, power inverter. At least the back side of it. And the battery. Um, by the looks of the size of the battery, it appears to be a 12 amp hour. And uh, if you want, you could actually just go on eBay. You can pick up a brand new 12 amp hour battery with free shipping for about 15 or 20 bucks and save yourself having to buy a whole new unit. Um, for me though, I am actually going to be uh, replacing this battery with a Shorei lithium, 12 volt lithium battery. Um, they don't have the, uh, the voltage drop that uh, lead acids do when jumping a vehicle. To give you an example, if you're, uh, say you have a, a voltage meter on your car, when you turn that starter, the key on to start your car, that voltage in that bat coming out of the battery is going to drop down to about seven. Um, we now there's really no lithium replacement battery for a car itself, uh, but there are for motorcycles, and I'm going to be putting one of those in here. Um, something the same size as that battery uh, would weigh about a pound and a half compared to that one's about six pounds, maybe a little bit more, and would have roughly 15 times the battery storage power storage capacity and cranking power. Now with lithium you don't have that voltage drop. A uh, fully charged lithium lithium uh, automotive style battery like that that I'd be putting in here would be about 13 volts 13 to 13.5 and when you if, say you were just starting that, a car on a lithium battery the voltage is only going to drop down to about 12. You maybe lose a volt and most of that's going to be due to inadequate wire size. Uh, due to the higher voltage when cranking over an engine in that case what would happen is the starter wouldn't have to draw as many amps and turn a lot smoother, quicker, cleaner um, and faster able to start over a motor a lot quicker uh, example we dropped one of those Shore Eye lithium batteries in one of our Harleys here and uh, with a brand new sealed AGM lead acid battery it went uh, now with the lithium, you hit the start button, it just went, rum, you know, instant, instant on. So uh, I'm going to be popping that inside here since the rest of the box is good. Um, that would also probably quadruple, if not more, the, the amount of power I'd be able to provide from the 120-volt uh, inverter outlet on the back as well. Um, so yeah, I've rambled quite enough. This thing's a very durable unit. I love. It's got the rubber rubber roll roll pads on it. Um, it's I've dropped it. Uh, we use this quite frequently for firing up our forklift. Uh, due to how infrequent we use the forklift, uh, we use the uh, jump box most of the time. So if you guys are looking for a decent jump box, this has been it. Um, I'm not sure if they still make this unit, but the Peak has been very good. Harbor Freight has one that's virtually identical. Um, this one was about, like I think I said, about 45 bucks. The Harbor Freight one is about 79, and it does not have the 200 watt inverter. Same design, same features, minus the inverter. I'm guessing the same battery. They're all made in China. Uh, only cost more. Of course, you can always use a 25% off Harbor Freight coupon. But um, I got this at uh, Farm and Fleet. Um, you can get them elsewhere. I usually go to Farm and Fleet for this kind of stuff. Um, and that's it. Any questions, feel free to post. 
but this is the portable power system 450 plus manufactured by manufactured by peak 